All right, so we're here in Toronto, Canada, in the flesh. Ronnie, I bought you some presents, some OVO. Oh, you know I collect lighters. lighters. I love. You collect? Uh -oh. So you want both of them? Why not? One, <laughs> one white, one black. No, this is for Team Why Not. It's for Gino. <laughs> <laughs> Fran, it, it's, it's such a blessing. You know, the last time we talked, we were on Twitch. Mm -hmm. And one of your goals, um, you kept all of us entertained. There were days that a lot of us were depressed, especially for those that worked in the entertainment industry. You saved a lot of people because not only the people that you worked with Dre's are watching every day, but people around the world. Mm -hmm. A lot of the DJs were inspired because you're one of the first DJs to be on there. And you were literally on every single day. Every night I did 500 nights in a row. So we had some sort of normalcy because we could t turn to you. We didn't know why we were stuck indoors. Mm -hmm. We were watching the news and it was making us crazy. But one thing that you said, because you had people of all colors, of all ages watching you, and you call them the, your family. And you're like, one day, I wanna meet the family across the world. Because mm -hmm. those of us, you know, I probably donated like thousands to you for all your streams and you helped us raise 50K for the Philippines. You helped us premiere songs, but we're here in Toronto. Mm -hmm. Did it hit you? Because you um, haven't traveled outside of... It's been three years since I've been here, and I actually have a lot of supporters, you know, from my Twitch channel that's in Toronto. So mm. um, just being here again is a is a total blessing, and I'm fortunate enough to, you know, to actually do some events out here and to hang out with amazing people. So. Well, this I show is uh, Filipinos in Hollywood. Tell us where, you're, where your family's from in, in the Philippines. When were you um, last there? Well, my dad and my mom... Um, they're both from Metro Manila, from Santa Cruz. Um, they met, you know, they, they lived close to each other. Um, and they they were actually like high school sweethearts. Oh, my God. Yeah. yeah. And, and you know, once they got together, they, you know, they had three kids. Oh, so you have brothers I, and sisters. I'm the eldest one, yeah. Oh, and I saw your mom has come to Vegas. She's, she's Oh, yeah, she loves, right? she loves Vegas, but not when it's hot, though. Like, my mom, she loves, she's typical filipino lady that loves to play bingo <laughs> you know, wait so you know does, does your mom know who drake chris brown was khalifa all your headliners are at drake's um she, and, yeah she knows now she knows you know yeah. it, there was a time when when my mom i remember she seen this picture of myself and jay-z and she's like who's that i see him all the time <laughs> jay-z beyonce's she's husband like, who? exactly what really? she said that's exactly what she said she oh. said oh that's beyonce's husband well, Franny, so. two quick questions about, you know, how you started out, because you're not going to remember how we met, but I'm going to tell you, because I remember when we started the official MySpace DJs, I got Khaled, I got Drama, I remember for the Bay, I specifically wanted you, I, I don't even think I got you on, but how did it start for you, just, this, just the DJing and, and, you know, the radio station, but how did it begin for you, why did you even start DJing? Um, well, my love for music, you know, my mom was a, the type of lady who just loved music from Stevie Wonder to mm. Whitney Houston what? to Kula Desma. To Celeste Legaspi. That's you know, Fr that's Frandora radio station. You know, right there. <laughs> the Beatles, like she loves, she just loved music, and I heard it growing up. Mm. Um, but the funny thing is, my dad is the one. When I told my dad when I was twelve, I told my dad I want to, you know, I want to start DJing. Mm. He's the one who actually believed in me, and he bought me a pair of turntables when I was twelve years old. Belt drive or, or, or real belt drive? Time? No, 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 no. <laughs> I didn't get my twelve hundreds till I was sixteen. And how'd you but, get that? You paid for it yourself? No, my dad bought me both pair of my oh. turntables. Well, your dad is amazing. Oh, man. Shout out to my dad, for real. Because he's the one who actually, you know, believed in me. And my dad, a lot of people don't know this, but my dad is the one who's buying me, you know, NWA and two live crew music when I was 12, 13 years I, old. I, I got, we got grounded because me so horny. Right in the cover. My mom was now like... Now that I think about it, I'm like, what was he doing? My mom was like, what... Why do you have me so horny? I'm like, Mom, why do you know what horny means? That's, that makes me feel uncomfortable. She's like, I got four daughters. And we're like, ah! Okay, we're not going to talk about that. Um, but then, so then how did it happen where you, where you started doing this professionally and you're one on, on one of the biggest stations in the world? Um, well, when I was 13, going on to 14, I got my internship at KML. Yeah. Which so you're was, one, the youngest ever, right? Oh, the youngest ever, yeah. And at the time, you know, KML was like the number one hip-hop and R&B radio station, commercial radio station in the United States. Yeah, even before Power, even before Real. And I was a fan of that station, mm -hmm. right? So, Wait, how do you get it at 13? Who, who opened the door for you? Um, Somebody brought me to the radio station, and I met Rosary, mm. who's also a Filipina lady, um, who was on the air. And when I met her, met all the other DJs, 
uh, she ended up asking me, you know, after my third, fourth time at the radio station, she ended up asking me if, you know, I wanted to become an intern. Because you were just out. doing guest mixes. Was no, I wasn't even doing guest mixes. You were just yet. hanging out? I was just hanging out. I just I was a fan of the radio station. How'd you get there? A fan of the music. Um You're 14. the person the person who brought me there, um, who took me there, the one who drove me to the radio station because he had asked me, um, you want to check out the radio station? Because he knows I listen to that station every day. Are you still friends with that person? Um, yeah, I still see him whenever okay, I go, go to the bay. His name is Paulus. Paulus. Yeah, shout out to Paulus. Thank God, because you became a pioneer in San Francisco. Some of the first, well, the first DJ to actually play a lot of the hip hop mm -hmm. on the West Coast. I don't even want to say names, but I'll say Biggie. Mm -hmm. So is that how, like, how did that relationship begin where all the East Coast artists are, like, coming to you first? Like, how did that begin? Um, you know, that was a, that was a time when, when, um, artists would actually go to the radio station. Mm -hmm. It's, it's a different time now. Yeah. You know, because everything Zoom. is social media driven. <laughs> but back then, um, whenever Biggie would come to, you know, the Bay Area. He's talking about Biggie. Notorious B.I.G. Yeah. yeah, we would hook up. So, you know, as well as, you know, other artists out there. But Biggie was definitely like... So was it the, the labels or who was calling you at that time? Because you developed real friendships with these guys. Um, well, once Biggie and I, you know, formed our relationship, him and Little C's actually started calling me. That's so it was not, nothing that had to do with the label. So that was even before Jay-Z? Mm-hmm. Okay. That was definitely Jay b way before Jay-Z. Yeah. So I, I saw you three times in life. I've always been a friend of fan. You, you don't, probably don't even know, but the first time, you, you, you were, you're kind of tired, but I, I saw you in Hawaii because I did a Pusha T show, and you were there with Dig Lifestyles, and you were playing Modern at the Modern, and so we had lunch with Chris. Mm -hmm. That was number one. And then number two, there was a Ducey event at Apartment 4B. Oh, yeah, yeah, in L.A. So small. Jay-Z and like 10 people were there. Yeah, I remember that. That was actually on Jay-Z's... Uh... 20th anniversary for his first album for reason and I was doubt. like mm -hmm. there's a whole room full of people and then they Jay wanted to talk to Franny and then the third time we were in in New York during fashion week Quincy was you know uh, we were working together and then you did the do save event, and then we don't want to talk about that crazy videographer but those three times I was just like I just was your fan and I saw you play at the sneaker store I saw you play at all of these different places so now we're back in Toronto Three years ago, or just tell us, like, because Toronto really loves you like you're from here. And I was like, do you have family here? But why did you first come to Toronto, and how did it become where now they're booking you? Like, um, My first time in Toronto was 2010-2011. Um, and I had got invited by uh, the OVO family, you know, mm -hmm. Drake, Nico, Chubbs, um, just, you know the whole of Yoko because they know that I supported their music in, mm. in Vegas. So did you meet Nico first or did you meet Drake first? Actually, Nico's one, one of the first people I met from that oh. whole crew. Yeah, and shout out to my boys from Crooks and Castles. They yeah. actually introduced me to Nico. What? Yeah. I've been trying to meet Nico for 10 years. So when I when I first interviewed Drake, it was the first interview you ever had mm -hmm. online on myspace.com. Um, you know, he was giving away So Far Gone on online and I was getting millions of plays in this kid from Toronto. And then I heard the Guapale sample where he's like walking in with Filipinos is the worst case. I was like, I ran up on him. I was like, we, 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 did, we did an interview. He, I didn't even have an interview set because he didn't have a manager. And so I messaged him and I did an interview with Ryan Leslie and I saw him in the hallway. I said, can we do an interview? He's like, what is it for in my space? Mm -hmm. Nico was in the room, but there's also Tyga. There was T Terry Kennedy, everybody. Um, and, and I said, were you dissing Filipinos when you're like, Filipinos are the worst case? Mm -hmm. He's like, no, all my, all my fucking best friends are Filipino. There's yeah. Nico, there's that. Mm -hmm. So... Did you already know that Toronto had this huge community before when you first came? Oh, definitely. Yeah. I already knew um, Toronto because when I was growing up, um, my cousins? family my family had friends from Toronto, mm. and they were you know they were Filipino, and you know I always was curious about where other Filipinos are, and they said mm. Toronto has a lot of Filipinos. Yeah. But going back to that story, so I met them, um, came to Carabana for the first time. Went to OVO Fest for the first time, which was the second year. Who was playing at that time? Um, golly, who was... was the Drake was still headlining his own festival at that time. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, of course. Um, that first that first OVO Fest... Was it The weekend. I, yeah, The weekend was definitely there. Mm. Weekend was... Um, this was, like, right after House of Balloons dropped. Mm. And uh, I forget. Was it Stevie Wonder? What? It was Stevie Wonder. Drake had some... Drake always has some like big surprises. Yeah. And our first interview was. I actually it, I, got. <laughs> what? I got footage. Was, was Khalifa? Snoop, Snoop, Snoop. 
Who's that? Snoop Dogg. Snoop. That's right, Snoop. Randy, you got the Golly. footage for days. We gotta talk about. The I got a bunch of yeah, I got a bunch of B roll from yeah. that um, show because I'm. We're gonna I do remember. a documentary on all of Fran's footage, but definitely. Um, so so you went to OVO. Were you DJing? What did you do? What were you um, doing? Actually, so at that time in 2011, Drake had a he had like a hookah lounge. What? It was called it was called Paradise. Yeah, and it was it was a private hookah lounge, and I actually DJ there for a couple of nights. I'll never forget. Mm. And that was like in a Chinatown area, um, but. That was the only event like I DJed, but you know I still had a great time. I met a lot of amazing people, ate yeah. some amazing food, yeah, and really got to know what Toronto was about. So around that time, you know, we worked with LRG. Drake did the LRG ad mm -hmm. on the bottom. It says MySpace.com/slash This Is Drake. I partnered with BT. We made him Rookie of the Year, and then we did the Sprite commercial. Mm -hmm. Last name ever, first name greatest. But so during this time is also when you guys connected for the motto. Right, so mm -hmm. how did that happen? So as, when he comes to the West Coast, he's always calling you like, DJ my birthday party music, extravagant sweets, right? So that was <laughs> all in the same year, 2011. He actually came to my birthday party. So this was right was, after we did the Sprite commercial. Like, which the was right, um, right around Memorial Weekend. Mm. He stayed a couple extra days in Vegas, come to my birthday party. And he was like, I want to do my birthday party in Vegas this year. In the Hardwood Suites, right? <laughs> yeah, so actually, no, my birthday was in the Hardwood Suite at the Palms. His birthday was at Marquee. So mm. what had happened was when he landed, he called me. He was like, yo, I need a studio. I'm like, perfect. We got a studio at the Cribbo. Right. Um, and he was like, I need to record this. For Rick Ross. This hook for Rick Ross. Um, no problem. You know, use the studio. And then we got in the studio. He pulled out his laptop. He had a beat pack from T-Minus. Shout out to T-Minus. <laughs> from Toronto. Um, amazing producer. So he started playing all these beats from T-Minus, and I heard the motto beat. The doom, 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 And doom. I was like, yo. He looked at me, and I was like, yo, this this one of those. But like, when did when was the, because the, you, there, it probably, did it have the Bay flavor already? Could you already hear the Bay in it, or what, what, was that stuff added after? No, 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 no. What happened was I heard the beat, I was like, yo, this is like a West Coast Bay Area vibe. He was like, yeah, you like it? I'm like, bro, you gotta record some off of When this. Franny likes something, I mean, he's radio. Your clubs, like that's why the, all the artists they, they go to you guys first because they're like, can you guys really play this? Are they gonna like it? Right? This is before it got ninety six million plays. Mm -hmm. But like, so he ours, he saw you liked it, and you're like, I like this. So he heard it, um, and he was like, Yo, you got any Mac Dre songs in your laptop? He knows Mac Dre. Oh, he knew Mac Dre. He knew who Mac Dre was. Okay. Um, I played a couple of uh, Mac Dre songs. He heard the song "Feeling Myself." Feeling myself, and that's why he made that reference. I remember feeling myself. A, I remember the, yeah, yeah. Rest <laughs> in peace, Mac Dre. I do it for the Bay. That's yeah. why he he did that reference, and he actually did that whole song in one take. He wrote that one take. He wrote his first verse in probably less than ten minutes. Yeah, and recorded it, and the rest is history. And I remember when he was done with it, he was like, "I'm gonna get Wayne on this," mm. and. You know, that was a different kind of that was kind of a, a that was kind of a different kind of song for us because in the West Coast we heard Drake, we heard Best I Ever Had, we heard Replacement Girl with Trey, with uh, Trey songs, but that's when the Bay really was like fucking with Drake. Oh yeah. But how did that turn into a song? Now it's a priority at the label, but now there's a music video. So tell us how the music video happened. Um. Well, he said he wanted to film it in the Bay, you know, out of respect for Mac Dre and you know all the Bay Area artists. So I called E40, um, called a couple of other. Uh, Mr. Fab. Mr. Fab. Yeah. Um, and I mean, the rest is history. The behind the foot, the behind the scenes footage that you have mm -hmm. is better than the video. Oh man. I the way that you guys are talking to each other, and you're not even on camera, it kills me. But you, because you, but what do you do? You you do the, the friend. It was actually camera. off my BlackBerry. Right. I recorded <laughs> that off my BlackBerry. The BBM. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, 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 but what you do is like, cause you're not on camera, but you like to, to show your, your, what is it called when you, when you do the point of view and you do the hand, it's called Franny cam, right? Yeah. The Franny cam. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. So then, um, did you know at the time when you guys were filming the video and I remember when I premiered, tell me when to go, it's the first song that we ever premiered online and then half the Bay area got signed. But mm -hmm. did you know when you're filming it, like how big it would get? Most definitely. Yeah. I already knew how big. Not just the song, but the album, the Take Care album was yeah, going to be because so he good. played it for me. And then I already knew 
that he was going to be around for a long time. Yeah. And here we are 11 years later and he's still, yeah. you know, making hits. Well, and I mean, that just shows that the Bay Area, and I love Pilo, like now he, I feel like Pilo's like the Filipino Drake, except for he also produces as well. Like it's ha gonna ha it's having its re resurgence again, right? Like, Most definitely. you know, I, and how do you feel? Because why did you move from, from, from Frisco to Vegas? But you still take it with you. Mm -hmm. I still hear that when we were playing, I hear, I hear you play it before, you know, Chris Brown or whatever, but why did you make the move to Vegas personally? The move to Vegas happened because um, there was a radio station out there opening up, mm. the very first hip hop and R&B commercial radio station. Yeah. And I was actually, it was two DJs yeah, and I was one of the first one? DJs on yeah, yeah. there. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was in 2001. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. that's, nine, that's 20 years, how come it doesn't feel like that long? Time oh. flies when you're having fun. Yeah. yeah. And then so you went from the, from radio, but then now you're a resident, and, and safe to say the biggest hip hop club in the world because everybody comes there. I, you know, they travel in whether it's Chris Brown or Wiz Khalifa or you name it. You've had everyone, Migos, like just doing residencies, and you you are the face of Drake's, right? So, how did that come about? Like, how did that like specifically Drake's? And you know, you're, you're the Las Vegas. DJ of the year, mm -hmm. you know, you're on, you're on the cover of magazine, you have a, a friends in day, I was there for your yeah. birthday, like, mm -hmm. how does like, you know, Vegas really open your arms, even though you're from the Bay, which is rare, because they don't do that for a lot of Bay DJs, and they don't do that for hip hop DJs, but why do you think, you know, it's different for you? Um, I just stayed true to the culture, you know, mm -hmm. there was a time when I was banned from the strip, really? or I couldn't DJ at any clubs on Las Vegas is Boulevard, it of the hip -hop in stuff? any of the casinos, because mm -hmm. of, the shooting you know, and all of that? Not just that, it was just EDM was on a rise and they didn't want hip hop in any of the clubs. Wow. You know, so I created doing? my own vibes. What were you, is that when you started Frandora Radio and doing it online? Kind of, yeah, kind of around the same mm -hmm. time, but that's when I really started doing my private suite parties, like in mm -hmm. the hotels. And that's how, you know, that's how Drake, Drake heard about my parties. Um, you know, Rick Ross, Floyd, Justin Bieber, like... So, friends, these... and my birthday is March 12th. We're going to do it in Hawaii, but when, a week after, can you throw me a sweet of party? Of course, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. You know, I just raised a little bit of money. But so so now, um, you know, playing Caravan again after all of these years, being back in Toronto, being back kind of on an airplane again for the first time, how does it feel? A blessing. It's like a sigh of relief almost, mm -hmm. you know, because you're in the house for, all, for, for over a year, and you're like, you have the itch to like, when am I going to get out there mm -hmm. and actually play for, you know, not a home crowd. Yeah. But then when I think about it, when I play in Vegas, it's not a home crowd because there's so many tourists yeah. that come to Dre's. Yeah, people from Wisconsin are, are messing you. But, you know, um, and I, I did want to talk about that, but about you, about you playing. But, you know, that did you, why did you, why did you go on Twitch? What was it? Did you feel, well, I've were you always, feeling a little bit depressed like a lot of us were? Like the serotonin I've, I've, I felt stage? the need that, you know, Music is universal, yeah. and I felt the need that I have to share the type of music that I love mm. to people out there and see who who accepts it. Because, yeah. you know, I've been streaming way before Twitch on yeah. Ustream when I was yeah. doing Frandora, yeah. you know, 08, 09. So I felt when D-Nice started it, shout out to D-Nice, yeah. by the way. Club Quarantine, and you, you did Instagram at first, or you did Frandora yeah. Radio on Instagram. Yeah. And then I they did. did the whole copyright thing, and then we're all we're gonna go somewhere. <laughs> we're gonna make the switch to Twitch, and mm. and here we are going on three years on Twitch, and I'm still doing Twitch every week. That's amazing. Well, shout out to um, the Twitch family as well as E Rock. Um, but why do you still do Twitch? You don't have to. I do it for the love of music, for mm -hmm. real. Like, you know, to play music for people all over the world at the mm -hmm. same time. Like the Isley Brothers, and he does certain days. I do. Yeah, I, I, just, <laughs> I love music. You know, you'll hear anything from. Like you said, the Isley Brothers, the Earth, Wind, and Fire, to the Jay Z, to Red Hot Chili Peppers, like you know what I mean. Just yeah. my love for music. I, I'm not, I'm not limited to what I can play on there. I can play whatever I want. Yeah. You know, and plus I get to play on my remixes. Well, out of all the EDM DJs, you know, Franzen is the most prominent Twitch DJ in the world. You know, we were, we did a live stream on the Philippines, and people were so surprised to hear your story, and there were thousands of people tuning in from the Philippines. Mm-hmm. So the question is, are you, are you ready? To I'm play ready to people? come. I'm ready to come to the motherland and play some music for sure because that's on my bucket list. Before I'm, you know, before I'm gone, 
I have to play in the Philippines. Well, you know, you can come in December. I always try to take Let's do it. Mango Tours, I wanted to take you. You were busy. You're always busy because having a residency, that's a big deal. Yeah. It's like having, like, basically, you're like a basketball player. Right, like, uh, yeah. like, uh, like Kobe can't take vacations. <laughs> Kobe can't yeah, go play. Yeah, during the season, correct. <laughs> but I'm ready. I'm, I'm ready, ready to come to, I'm ready to go to the Philippines and, and play some music. So that's for part sure. two. We're gonna bring friend. We're gonna, we're gonna have fun. We're gonna bring Manila Gray, which you introduced me to, Pilo, Guap, Iraq. I don't know everybody. We're just gonna go as a family. And I just, um, on behalf of all of us that we're like really going through it. And you know, I'm, I'm a girl, so I get emotional. But just thank you because. There were times that I was going through emotional abuse, verbal abuse, mm -hmm. at home all day, and I'm usually traveling the world. Mm -hmm. But like tuning out to you and like like joking with everybody in the comments, dropping a few dollars here and there, it just like made me feel like okay. Yeah, and that's you know that's what music does. You know that's the vibration of music. It's universal. It's kind of like food. You know, like it's just it has that type of effect on people. You know, so thank you. So when you said that day, I can't wait to meet my, my family. I want to mm -hmm. see them in person. As soon as I knew that I was going to OVO Fest for the first time, I needed to go with you. Yeah. So thank have you, fun. Rod. I know. Appreciate you. <laughs> when we go to the Philippines, <laughs> all right, Drake, I stood in line. I had to go to the ATM and pay cash. Because their, their their credit card machine was down. So, Nico. No way, really? <laughs> I did. At the bottom floor. So, Nico, I did that for you. But, okay. Go, go record your mixes. We got to go to the Scars, 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 Scarborough. Scarborough. Basketball game. <laughs> we'll see you at Chris Brown and the baby. All right. We're here with the OV 